Hello and welcome to Ignani.com. C Sharp.net Programming, Version 4.0. Level 2, Chapter 1, Part C. In this video, I will continue with the topic, Language Interoperability, which is one of the highlights of .NET Platform, and how C Sharp plays its role in language interoperability. When we say language interoperability, what we really mean by this is that, classes written in one language are able to talk directly to classes written in another language. To be more specific we can say that a class written in one language can be inherited by a class written in another language. Check out this code written in vb.net. You can see a class named vb underscore class which contains a private variable underscore num1 of type integer. A public property num1, of type integer. And a public function named add. Which accepts two, input parameters of type integer and returns the output also as an integer. Check out this code, which is written in C sharp. Here the first line is importing the VB library namespace. I will speak about the namespaces later on. The C Sharp class in this code belongs to a different namespace called CS Library. You can see a class named CS underscore class 2, which inherits the VB underscore class, which is written using VB.net. This code demonstrates how, a class written in VB.net language, is being inherited by a class written in C Sharp language. Irrespective of the language used, a class can have instances of other classes, that have been written in one or more languages as per my previous point. An object written in one language, can directly call and make use of methods or properties from another object written in another language. The code you see here, is written in C sharp. You can see that an object named objvb underscore class, is declared and initialized. It is of type vb underscore class. It is the same vb underscore class that you saw previously which was written using vb.net language. You can see that using this object, we are able to access the property num1, and also assign a value to it. Also, we can call the methods provided by the objvb underscore class too. Visual Studio IntelliSense is also capable of understanding the class that was written in a different language than the one in which the code is being written. This code demonstrates, that irrespective of the language used, a class can have instances of other classes, that have been written in one or more languages. It also demonstrates, how an object written in one language, can directly call and make use of methods or properties from another object written in another language. I would also want you to notice, that while vb.net used integer as the variable type, c sharp which does not have the integer variable type, used int, as the data type. Objects written in different languages, can be passed as arguments and return values, irrespective of the language the code is written. Check out this piece of code, that has been modified to add a new method subtract, which takes in, two, inbound parameters of type int, and returns an int as the output. This method is called, by passing the property, and the output of the, add method, of the object of type vb underscore class, which is written in vb.net language. We can even use objects of type vb underscore class itself as parameters. This code demonstrates, objects written in different languages can be passed as arguments, and return values irrespective of the language the code is written. In the above statements, I repeatedly referred to languages without naming any of them, which does not go on to say any programming language that is available for us, I referred to only those languages, that are supported by .NET Platform and those that have a .NET compiler to compile the code into IL code.
you can refer to the previous article in this series to know the list of languages that are supported by .NET Framework. You might ask, that when we can develop everything in one language, why do we need so many languages? The answer is that, by supporting more than one language, .NET makes it easy for people to start developing .NET based applications instead of asking them to learn everything from the beginning. Also, by supporting multiple languages, .NET removes the restriction of language dependency and allows people to choose their preferred language of development. I can continue to go on giving the benefits of .NET supporting multiple languages, but that is not what we set out to do with this course. How does .NET achieve language interoperability? Since developers use a wide variety of tools and technologies, each of them supporting different features and types, it has historically been difficult to ensure language interoperability. However, language compilers and tools that target the CLR, short for Common Language Runtime, benefit from the runtimes built in support for language interoperability. For a class to derive from, or have instances of other classes, it should have the knowledge about all the data types used by the other classes. This is why strong data typing is so important. Strong data typing, that I spoke about in our previous video helps in achieving language interoperability. Let us take an example of a method written in VB.NET, defined to return an integer, a data type available in VB.NET. C-sharp does not have any data type of that name. If only the C-sharp compiler knows how to map a VB.NET integer data type to some known type in C-sharp, the problem will be solved. Common type system, defines how types are declared. Common language specification, works with CTS to ensure language interoperability. Common type system. .NET solves this data type mapping problem, by using the common type system, CTS. CTS defines how types are declared, used, and managed in the CLR. The CTS predefines data types that are available in IL, so that all language compilers that target the .NET framework will produce compiled code that is ultimately based on these types. If we get back to our previous example, the IL type in 32, maps exactly to the Visual Basic 2010's integer, which is actually a 32-bit signed integer. This int32 has a corresponding data type in C-sharp called, int. And all the other languages that target .NET Framework have it, but, with different keywords. When the code from VB.NET, or C-sharp, or other languages are compiled into IL, they all are simply mapped as int32. In the same way there is a mapping for all types. In .NET Framework, system.object is the common base type from where all the other types are derived. IL provides a number of predefined primitive data types. IL, makes a strong distinction between value types and reference types. Value types are those where the variable stores its data directly, whereas in case of reference type, variable simply stores the address at which the corresponding data can be found. IL also specifies the manner in which the data is stored for both value and reference types. In case of a value type, the data is stored in stack whereas for reference types they are always stored in an area of memory known as the managed heap. However, if value types are declared as fields within reference types, they will be stored in line on the heap. In the coming chapters, I will cover the stack and the heap and how they work. Also I will cover the list of all built-in value types in the coming chapters. Common Language Specification CLS works with the CTS to ensure language interoperability. Different languages provide different set of features which comes in the way of language interoperability. To fully interact with other objects regardless of the language they were implemented in, objects must expose to callers, 
Only those features that are common to all the languages that target.NET framework. Common language specification specifies a set of minimum standards that all compilers targeting.NET must support. The CLS was designed to be large enough to include the language constructs that are commonly needed by developers, yet small enough that most languages are able to support it. This does not mean that we are not supposed to write non-CLS code. The restriction of using CLS compliant features applies only to public and protected members of public classes. Within private implementations of the classes, you can have non-CLS compliant code, because code in other assemblies cannot access this part of your code anyway, and hence does not affect language interoperability. For c -sharp developers, the CLS will not affect your code very much, because there are very few non-CLS compliant features of c -sharp. This means that c -sharp language by itself is CLS compliant to a large extent. It is perfectly acceptable to write non-CLS compliant code. However, if you do, the compiled IL code is not guaranteed to be fully language interoperable. In the next video, I will continue with, Garbage Collector and Security in .NET. If you have any questions or need more information on any part of this video, please use the forum at ignani.com, we will be happy to help you. You can find, a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how to videos, and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Use our forum topic related to this tutorial to get answers to all your questions. We would want your learning process as interactive as possible. Feel free to contact us.